Fusion made available from the Steinberg website. It looks pretty good so far. It took forever to download. It was about 100 gigabytes, something like that. So about 50 gigabyte pl- download plus 50 gigabyte install. So bear in mind for that. It looks totally different compared to Ableton. Relatively simple and straightforward to get working on it. So anyway, this is just us it out. Uh, Alright, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, before I get uh, get going, before I forget, there's still a couple of odds and ends. Working at getting a, a bit of a blockchain. Let's just see who's going. So we'll be able to get people going on that as well. Uh, as well as we're building the C20 lectures here is coming forward, forthcoming. So I think we're going to have a bit of a laugh with this Steinberg though. It looks pretty decent. Uh, totally different actually than Ableton. Uh, might be one of them. So what else have we got on the news? Yeah, uh, so yeah, the C plus plus twenty lecture series is going to be forthcoming, where we'll talk about uh, programming uh, in C plus plus twenty. Uh, we're probably going to do uh, everything else. Probably, you know, we're probably more concentrating on actually building and getting it out there and maintaining it and getting to utilize all the features. Perhaps that uh, your C plus plus your general C plus plus tutorial doesn't actually cover, for example. Uh, we'll be looking at formats, platforms, etc., 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 that everything else. And we'll also be looking at uh, costing features as well. So when uh, you add any particular feature into your software, it's got a cost in the correct way of doing that. And yeah, so we upgraded the AMD PC. We could do with it. With the AMD Ryzen, it's a pretty decent unit, but only PCI 3 generation. So yeah, looking back over the few months we've been doing this, we've built uh, like like a, a like a second-hand PC for stars that didn't get us too far because it couldn't you know couldn't really keep up with today's software. And then we built an Intel 12th gen i5 12th gen, uh, and then we had an had an AMD build as well, the UK's cheapest brand new PC. So we built a brand new computer, all brand new, decently performing. Like, is, uh, there's a decent, just a plain old desktop, something going on the internet and what have you, yeah. Uh, 250 quid. We spent a, f- a bit more money on that. We got a new PC case for it, a new chip. It was a PCI 3 gen chip, we paid 110 great rich pound for. And we got a second hand graphics card, a 75 pound AMD GPU. Uh, that's gone uh, on Windows 11. It's on Windows 11 Pro, and I'm really, really impressed with it. Well, that is a unit. It's comparable in in comparison to the i5 12th gen. Basically, it plays Call of Duty, what have you, Doom, Doom 3, Doom Eternal. Uh, and it does Doom 84K as well. Uh, doesn't have a uh, COD frame rate as, as much as the i5, but as an experience, perhaps it's because it's got a 4K monitor. Uh, I have a soft swap for it. All in, including the monitor, was, we spent about 750 quid on it all together. However, some of that uh, 750 quid is uh, we've got a leftover central processing unit that we, we should could, could do selling or, or perhaps donate towards a new build. So it goes like that. Uh, 250 quid cheaper than the uh, i5 12th gen with a 1080p gaming monitor. Uh, perhaps could do with... And it's got a spare drive, uh, so we're well impressed with it. Really, so the unit itself, you could build it for sub five hundred pound, uh, and totally the idea of chucking in the AMD six thousand five hundred XT onto it. You can revert, you know, expect it to be backwards compatible. We might swap the graphics cards out from the Intel to the AMD one, uh, because it may work a little bit better. Like anyway, so so one of them, one of them projects, the next best materials project, we might do something like that. Like I said, we've got the C plus plus twenty. We've got to cut that. Uh, that's going to be big. Uh, we'll concentrate on the C plus plus twenty, but most importantly, concentrate on actually building the application, getting it out there, and getting it tied in. We're looking at taking on the new web hosting project as well. Uh, the cancellation fee at the minute is a bit much, so we may just add on to it. And get the cheapest possible web server. 
Uh, we've got it in it around seven pound a month, which over a two year work contract, I do the math, 70, 10 months, two out of 140 months in four more months. Uh, yeah, so maybe around 200, 210 quid over two years. So, you know, that was only seven pound a month, but that will allow us to uh, connect to the command line. At present, because we have the WordPress website bundle, so if you go to www.thebasicmaterialsproject.com, it's basically my WordPress blog at the minute. It, you can log on to it via WordPress, and there's a bit of background stuff going on, but you can't really do too much with it, uh, unless you know all about WordPress, which I don't, don't have the time to learn either. So it carries on uh, from the previous time we tried to get Adobe Dreamweaver to connect to the web server. We only got it about 75% of the way. So that's like a bit... So to bring that up to speed, we're going to have to uh, change the web hosting package. So I've talked to the web host and uh, we've got a bundle lined up. It's only something like £7 a calendar month, which if you want to practice your Linux system administration skills, it's pr pretty cheap. You're not getting much for the package. You're getting hardly anything at all. You're getting a single core chip with 512 RAM and 40 gig of drive. However, it's up there on the web 247365 with its own static IP address. And now we're going to get this new bundle. We're going to look at uh, placing not only client side bundles. So we built client side bundles on Linux Fedora before. Uh, we've had a look at Ubuntu, and obviously. And then. Yeah, that was the command line build, so out of build from the command line. That was C++ ASAP, so that was previous on the YouTube channel. But we had a uh, sort of like a desire to leap forward and, and make it a bit more complicated by having a client bundle, which we could have many client bundles and perhaps sell those client bundles as well for like, you know, a pound each, something like that. So you'd be able to go to the Basic Materials Project website, download the bundle, and like pay like a pound or something like that, or you can get it for free and perhaps make a donation is a way of paying it. And also as well, because we, we're going to upgrade the web package, we'll have the necessary web server. Granted, it's a very humble entry-level one, but it would be great to practice our Linux command line. So we had to do all sorts, like we had to create secure... Secure, secure sockets layer certificates and we have to find out about secure shell and FTP and SFTP secure file transfer protocol and we have to have user accounts but we also have to have uh, encryption keys insured encryption keys as well and the variety of uh, FTP accounts as well so although this new bundle it will remove the website as it is presently, so we've got to back that website up, of course. Not that there's nothing much on it anyway, just a few leftover basic materials projects from previous episodes. But the point is, with uh, Ubuntu Snaps I.O., it's like Linux Fedora 36 is kind of like in a similar manner as Ubuntu Snaps I.O., which is how the Linux Ubuntu, you can install the package at, at the Linux server repository. And you can also have a website correspondent to it. So, for example, your website, it could be a crypto exchange website, for example, and you'd like to have your application communicate with the web server directly. And then also as well, I was uh, talking with a fellow from Help, Help Desk and uh, we was talking about uh, DNS, Active Directory and Lightweight Directory Act Active Protocol, LDAP, which is a ton of IT stuff, really, but... You would actually be able to practice all of that uh, actually in the real world as well. So your uh, Linux Ubuntu bundle in this instance, what well, it's going to be on the Ubuntu, Ubuntu snaps, so you can get it from the Ubuntu store, and it will, the bundle itself will interconnect with the web server. So there could be anything on the web server, for example, online shopping. It could be Bitcoin and cryptocurrency or what have you, or it could be a computer game for example so presently we can't really explore these options because we don't we don't really get and this will tie in with the C++ 20 course we don't get to utilize the more advanced features just by practicing our C++ uh, sort of like in isolation so if you look at say an individual person learning C++, C++ that kind of like that's not kind of not 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 what we we're, we're, not, we're not going for that uh, i already believe for the most part uh, especially today Mostly C++ developers are pretty good. 
Uh, but it's actually getting products to market or getting them out there, making them available, you see. So to be able to achieve this, obviously there's the Windows Universal Windows Platform route, uh, which will put your build on basically billions of computers or consoles, uh, mobile phones on the planet. It already has emulators in it. But we're not the biggest tech company on the planet. Uh, we're just a humble basic materials project. So if, it, if you're looking to practice up your skills and that, please like and subscribe, visit the website, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we're on SoundCloud and MixCloud as well. Uh, and hopefully we can get it going. And uh, yeah, so... Yeah, we'll do maybe 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 just like just trying to like lay off playing Call of Duty for a while and then we'll try and get some real work done. Now these basic materials projects that are forthcoming, we're gonna be using the Ubuntu platform. So we're gonna get the web server transferred up. We'll get it spun up at the web server internet service provider. Again, like not too much of an expense for you, about two hundred and ten, two hundred and twenty pounds. Especially over two years. However, this is the absolute cheapest package available okay and you don't get your website you you, you, you but the whole point is i'll be able to key in the adobe st stuff as well i can't actually tie in the adobe stuff that we're doing with the adobe creative cloud suite so we can't actually tie that in yet uh basically so because of the present bundle okay i've got, I've got to look out for cancellation fees as well so it, so it's one of them uh i wish i knew this when i started same with the Adobe products and stuff like that. I would have saved months and months and months, but I will get in there, you know, like slow but sure we started to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. Not really use Photoshop to be honest. Premiere Pro for cutting a podcast, we've done that. And obviously we do a DJ mix occasionally as well. We short artists and podcasters at the minute, so we've got plenty of availability. So if you need a, a mix or a mastering for your music, get in touch via SoundCloud or like leave a message somewhere. Uh, you can uh, get a free audio engineering post session going to the base materials project if you wish and uh yeah we'll maybe even get a bit of online store going so find a way of making some money out of this we've done uh quite a lot of work these past few months uh it's getting on though and uh really by this time obviously it's the first time learning experience so i'm I'm not primarily a graphic designer or a web developer or a digital artist or anything like that. I come from like the other side of the mixing desk, really. So I was an audio, audio engineer, uh, but it's something that like I've got to do to keep going. I keep learning new skills and what have you. So the past couple of months now, it's coming on nearly f three quarters of a year, perhaps. Yeah, about oh, seven months, something like that. I've been working on the website. I was went and learning these Adobe tools as well. So we got pretty far, but we didn't get all of the way, you see. And obviously, uh, we have a new opportunity because once you've got a static public-facing IP address, which, which is new web package, we ought to be going on, you can actually sell websites on that uh, web address. So you can s you could become a multi-tenant provider yourself. So that's something as a graphic designer. If you can get your Adobe tools to link directly in, uh, obviously, there's some Linux command line stuff we've explored as well. Uh, Active Directory, Domain Name System, LDAP, and also Apache.conf file. Now, Apache is the website server as well, so we also got to restart the Apache web server, something we can't do at present because it's a multi-tenanted solution. Our, our web package is a multi-tenanted one, so we can't actually hit the command line and reboot it. Therefore, we can't write over all of the files and folders. If I, I've done this before and I totally crashed the website, it was offline for a little while, and we had to go back in and rebuild everything with the uh, WordPress. But it's cool. Uh, so, so that new feature as a as a creative designer or creative artist, you, if you know the Linux command lines and can update the uh, LDAP, DNS, uh, what have you. And also the Apache.com files, if you can manage it at that level of uh, Linux database management or Linux system admin, then you better offer, offer that opportunity because, let's face it, uh, a really humble website, if, if we can get the cost down, say, for example, our provider's paying us, say, whatever, so we're paying our provider something like, I don't know, we'd probably call it about 300, 400 pounds actually to make it a bit, because the website we're getting, the new web server that's coming up is the, is the cheapest possible so it's very humble, but it's only to demonstrate the principles, 
obviously when we do that we can link adobe into it directly so whatever website you can build in a, uh, adobe dreamweaver for example and, it, and that of course can tie into premiere pro after effects so all the indesign uh all of the adobe creative cloud products as well and perhaps you can get some sort of photograph management system as well as well so if you want to do an online newspaper for example or you know like you by that time you ought to be able to utilize the features at scale where things are moving at fleet level or at armada level or at group like a group tactical level uh like so there's a bunch of stuff in there and it's the same with the c plus plus uh we'll still stick with uh c twenty with the ubuntu snaps dot i o type of build environment so that will allow us to push it's like installing a service on windows like that allows to push into linux uh, the ubuntu linux server any modules we've programmed ourselves you see so we can build in open source push the client bundle to our clients using the ubuntu snaps io and automatic update features and also push more complexity onto the web server obviously in the future say for example if we get a big contract or what have you we'll definitely expand along those lines but right now that minimum cost plus uh if you can charge whatever you can charge to your clients for a website then happy days really but you could really bring the fee down at the end of the day or make a bit more profit uh the thing is this in the game uh training and learning is all good but actually having something out there like a living breathing project that's you know alive in real time knowing how, how to do that that utilizes a whole bunch of stuff that your C++ tutorials and a, a lot of your C++ shows don't actually go anywhere near and you don't actually learn anything like that. You learn as a C++ guy, but also in isolation, you see. So we've got to like try and take your developer, your mentality of your developer and, and put them at fleet level or at a model level to see who, how, where, why, what, when, you know, the rest of it, a whole bunch of features in there that we don't even get to realize uh, but once we get a bundle out there, like a Ubuntu Snaps bundle on both clients uh, and servers, and we can observe the interactivity, we begin to look at best practices as well. We can integrate this uh, encryption secure sockets layer, LDAP, DNS, Active Directory type sort of stuff. And also see that, for example, uh, we, we could put some fancy uh, crypto financial sort of programs on the server side and how we could begin to sort of like timeshare out so 24 7 365 available services uh we could also get into uh there might be some sort of android interconnectivity as well where we can source and sync uh obviously once we've got the bundle installed on the mobile phone or the tablet or the desktop or the laptop uh and no doubt internet of things and smart devices and stuff like that. We'll be able to see how from the master website we can see all of the bundles and we can look at all the metrics and information that might be uh, necessary to improve the pro product or service. So you're not going to get any of this just by learning C++, so to speak. So in this forthcoming C++ course, we're going to uh, look at everything else. We're going to assume that you already know C++20 inside out and what have you, but we're going to try and like take that to the next level by f rolling out at group level all across the fleet. Get to see a little bit more about client server architecture and how, for example, a, it, you just get better as an individual and learn some skills. A lot of businesses do this anyway. For example, we're all using apps on our mobile phones and tablets and stuff like that. And obviously there's to and fro between the app and the website and also you'll be able to show sort of like things like unified identity so you can log into your google or whatever and then that can log into all the other websites out there for example so i guess it's identity and banking as well like so you know banks obviously you have your app and whatever authentication and stuff like that and it has some direct modules on service for example when you're buying and selling cryptocurrencies uh, for example, you know, although your app is pinging to and from, and so are millions of others at the same time, especially in foreign exchange as well. And you can imagine stock market applications work similarly. This kind of out out in the field, sort of like in the wild, real world sort of training, 
was what we're hoping to get across in this new C plus plus twenty like lecture. Uh, we have to wait till the other side of the web website upgrade, but we'll get it going. Like so, uh, yeah, I still like Fedora. It's, all the, it's good to start out with. It's a good solid little platform. Uh, what else have we got? So yeah, that that'll be the C plus plus twenty uh, on u using Ubuntu Snaps. So Ubuntu Snaps is basically the software installer package. So you can get bundles or packages, and you can double click the install button, and it'll installer and they can connect to the master server in the background for example for trading for example or you can also see once you've built pieces of software especially software that communicates over tcp ip and shares certificates and f f you know is it friend type access modifiers in c++ now for example you can then begin to relay for example so for example if we build an app then we can have in-app purchases for example, or we could put uh, a crypto wallet on the web server itself, so the website itself has a, a crypto address or a crypto wallet. So we could obviously get the C++ source code for a particular crypto wallet, compile it, build it in the Ubuntu Snaps, and then push that or Ubuntu Snaps onto our particular server. And also create the necessary amount of software in the bundle for the next update, so anybody who has the project bundle installed on the phone, they can get an app update. So, like, for example, like all you do is update. You know, every time I turn on my computer, all I do is update Adobe. Every time I turn on my phone, all it does is update all the software installed on it. And every time I turn on Windows, all it does is update. You can have a look at why all that madness is. Yeah, so that ought, ought to be uh, pretty decent. Like, that's all a good level, that is. And obviously, there's the uh, <coughs> greater tie-in into, in, into corporates. Obviously, for the individual uh, sole trader and entrepreneur, and also from the individual technical perspective as well, like so so just to get you thinking out of programming a C app that but thinking about it out there in the wild, how it's communicating with the central server, and what sort of security stuff you need to build in. For example, can it test whether you're on the corporate LAN or you know, can you VPN in? So for example, if you're using Wi Fi or whatever at the local uh, cafe it still is very secure. For example, I suppose you could also look at all the other information data your smartphone or your tablet is giving out as well as your laptop. And perhaps, yeah, you could also use it as a launch pad. Certainly, in terms of economy, sure. But you could also test some of these more advanced C++ programming topics. Actually, it, it, far greater than, uh, basically, if you're just sat in, you know, your own little square programming C++, you your own little square. I... Right? Uh, what else have we been getting? We've been getting cracking on with a UX course. We've passed the first first two weeks on that. Onto the third one, it's a bit uh, slow. It's a bit. Uh, it's one of them. Like it's worth doing if you get the opportunity. It's always good to do courses, get little certificates now and then, keep you focused, uh, keep you concentrating on something. But then again, of course, the amount of technical jargon is. For me personally, uh, the past couple of months have been mind-boggling, really. We're doing everything, really everything from Adobe on the top, prototyping all the way down to command line Linux, up and down. Uh, but, it's a, yeah, it's different. Yeah, of course, it's it's different. It's expensive as compared to just, like, buying buying a mixing desk. We've mentioned that before, obviously. Like, if I were to spend the money again, would I do it again? I'd probably just get a real good mixing desk, <laughs> to be honest, and leave all this to somebody else. Pay somebody else to do this. <laughs> like it's like learning, you know, when you're in a band or what have you, and spend all your time arguing about all this stuff because nobody knows how to do it. You can't get get can't get on with it, get cracking. But when you do learn, or there's obviously there's the other side of that. So you know that that one thing about you know, yeah. For now, it's just a project, really. It's, it's just we're just at the hobby, amateur hobby le hobbyist level. Like, you know that, I won't say this was super serious, but once we get this uh, web server done, we'll better display stuff like that. We, we could put the Cardano source code on it, for example, and you could look at what it takes to run. Like, you, you'll get to see it. It's the same with Bitcoin mining and mining pools and stuff like that. It's no different, really. I mean, the, so the, the C++ source code within it will be unique to the project, yes, but all the other project infrastructure. So this is, 
a bunch of stuff about oh, any project will need this out there. Any, any project greater than one person sat at one computer just mucking around in C++ for their own little meanderings and stuff. Whereas this is a project that could, I mean, it could potentially involve lots and lots of customers and obviously very big financials as well, especially if it's uh, online foreign exchange, currency trading, all this Bitcoin, crypto sort of stuff. Uh Online gaming is another great, another great potential as well. So we could de- definitely demonstrate the one two snaps I/O hitting both client side and uh, uh, server side as well. So for example, we could have a client access application and on on the server side, like it's done. If for example, if you're playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare or what have you, the Call of Duty app has all the Call of Duties inside of it that you can then go and purchase. There's an in-app store where you can buy bundles. As well, so you can get a new little bundle, like a new little character, a new little calling card, and a few COD points, you know, with internal cryptocurrency or what have you. Again, getting almost like the jar, like we need to get the jars sorted before we can get down to any contents, like if you know what I mean. So we'll, it won't really be about, oh, we can explore further along that line of development but what again lot like basically what something that we go over again and again and again it's necessary necessary amount of there's a necessary amount of flow that needs to be in place first before we can do this because once we want to snap one particular bundle we can create lots of different bundles and once we want to snap io the server side we can create lots of different server side stuff like and we begin to see architecture and how, how it's managed so with that, hopefully, uh, it will give you a bit of competitive edge uh, out there in the job market. And, whatever. and it's something that is big business because uh, the Microsoft Store with a universal Windows platform, for example, is probably the best example, right, really, because, yeah, that's going to be way beyond anything we do with the base materials project for now. But the idea is, you you know, you've got an application or whatever, you've got a product and you want to land that on billions of computers or smartphones and whatever. It's like the Apple Store with uh, Apple X Core as well. It's another sort of thing. Google, Android, of course, does it as well. Uh, so it's a part of the platform uh, politics or the part of the platform dynamic, really. So, yeah, some stuff is supposed to work across all platforms like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, but in actual fact, in reality, it kind of doesn't. Because uh, there's that many different operating systems and that many different build versions and there's so much complexity going on and managing that complexity. So we'll see why C++20 as well at that time. And we'll see, we'll get it. So that if you can just like just bring your mind out of thinking about programming and uh, all software, you know, the rest of it, and actually get out there in the real world and actually see how it's done. It's a key part of Microsoft, it's a key part of Apple, it's a key part of Google Android strategy. Basically, if you look at online gaming as well, it's also a key part of online banking. Obviously, those standards are going to be far stricter and probably tested a bit better. But we can look at that. Uh, but as you can see, as an assistance to business and the, in the e-commerce so the, hopefully the training will assist people to be able to take part in e-commerce. And maybe we'll be able to do something on the website like a shopping cart or something like that where we, you can have uh, customers pay or make a donation, uh, for example. And it could be, you could have an idea for it. It could be like a Dungeons and Dragons game or a Warhammer 40,000 type game. It might only be the, the, the crummiest independent game sort of thing. It could be knowledge. Uh, you could be a teacher, a lecturer, for example, etc., etc., etc. And having something like that uh, on your website for a very small amount, it may like circumnavigate any uncomfort about your know, people making donations or everyone on the internet scrounging or you know it's all like a Nigerian hustle scam, where somebody like say for example you may have your best videos or your best podcasts in a bundle that you can purchase for very cheaply or you know, to own or something like that. It is, I think the word is a gratuity or something like that. I think there is a word that does describe it. Well, something very humble and simple, like it could be a comic book, Adobe, uh, an e-book, what have you. You know, it could be a, a sample pack if you make beats and you're a producer. For example, you could be a vocal artist and, and you could sell a vocal bundle. You just may have some really mad ideas for software. Maybe you can do, do it better than a competition. Right. Obviously, this sort of thing is going on. 
Uh, yeah, like we mentioned, we've got on this Steinberg 12 Pro, so you know if you want to have a mess around, you've got about 100 gigabyte free disk space. Get over to the Steinberg website and download Steinberg 12 Pro. We're going to start next. We've got a 30 day trial on it, so and we're cutting the podcast on it at the minute. I might take a photo or something, flick that up on Twitter or something. So right now we've got a uh, forthcoming. Yeah, the, hopefully on the other side of this web 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 uh, upgrade. On the other side of that, we can get down to business and start looking at installing both client and server bundle on Ubuntu, as well as perhaps finding ways of uh, entering the market with p- products. But also, as well, when you start looking at Apple, Microsoft, Google, uh, and online games and stuff like that, it's a big part of it, and getting it right is important, which might not, uh, it might not have anything to do with your C++ as well, especially if you can drop complexity on the server side as well, so that means your app can do great things like you can work uh, all kind of statistics heuristics or uh you know stuff that currency exchange people and these bitcoin traders and stuff like going on they have all kind of mathematics and what have you so especially if it's algorithmic trading and what have you you can you know see the benefit of putting it on the server side like uh, you could run all sorts. You could run an online radio station through it and have the bundle as your online radio player, etc., etc., etc. Really, obviously, the bundle at the minute everyone seems to think it's all about Bitcoin and crypto. Really, so we've got a blockchain basics uh, coming up now, but we'll do more research on that. We're going to try and use C plus twenty to emulate some of the concepts in blockchain. Uh, but that's you know that's third you know I mean first we've got to get the website up and running and get that Adobe connected into it, okay so that way we can make fantastic websites and obviously because it's it'll be a new static IP we can then subcontract websites to our clients so we'll show how we can build websites for our clients and we'll go through the line it's command line procedures we're going to have to do especially if we're only selling absolute basic websites we could a cost of around two hundred and fifty pound. Uh, you could maybe put a website up there for two years for it. If it was going to be a humble deal and pretty simple, what have you, you could do it for £500, really. Obviously, if you want to buy and sell, trade, and do crypto and the rest of it, that's something a little bit more advanced. It's going to cost more, say, in terms of computers and stuff like that. And again, you'll see, we're using Ubuntu Snaps, how we can drop that complexity on, on the server side and have it interacted uh, securely with uh, VPN, uh, secure sockets laying, LDAP and DNS and what have you in the uh, application bundle that we push so the client has something they can buy, for example, m- buy for a humble price, what have you. We can look at the security features built in and metrics as well, that are important. We can also look at the master controller application as well back at the website when Many hundreds of people, many thousands of people, many tens of thousands of people, or in the case of these massive online processing stuff like, for example, Call of Duty, there's a, there's a bunch of millions of people on it at the same time, like, and each one's accessing it via their own bundle, and they have their own little uh, wallet with their own little uh, Call of Duty points and all little loadouts and other, their own little characters and what have you. So obviously that's at mega scale, you know, I mean, multiple million multiple million players and also as well like, in terms of monetization as well like if them out of them multiple millions of players if you can expect some income from them for your business like obviously the the league we're playing in is basically the self employed entrepreneur sort of learner level we're not uh so but obviously you can expand upon the idea and see how it's pretty part it's a part of operations management and operations research anyway in industry. Like so so and this is where platforms themselves. So there's a bit of a thing in terms of multi-tenancy. For example, everybody's on Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram, except me or or whatever. Then the app itself kind of is the user interface. That's the user experience or the user interface. Whereas in the background, like where you know hundreds of millions of people use the app, but out of the hundreds of millions of people, maybe only a few million actually have a website. Or have you and out of those few few million people that have a website? Maybe it's only a few hundred thousand businesses that actually have is that is actually competing like technologically like this. You see, so it's only something you you gotta consider it really if your business is digital, 
And maybe that would add a bit of teaching. Yeah, you could definitely, I mean, if you're charging clients for websites or whatever, you, you can bring that cost all the way down. And, for example, you could be attached to any particular business and be on uh, in charge of online marketing and presence. So that might help. All right, that's it for today. Until next time.